Hello there everyone, today's video we're going to have a look at a particular pitfall within the EIS regime, EIS Enterprise Investment Scheme, good for investors who are investing in small SME businesses because you can knock a few quid, a few quid even off your tax bill for the investment, all sorts of tax breaks with EIS, I've done lots of videos on them, but this is a video about how it can go slightly wrong for you down the line because one of those tax breaks is no capital gains tax at the back end. So basically, in a nutshell, you invest some money into an EIS qualifying company, reduces your income tax bill in the year that you invest, or you can elect to carry it back. But basically, you get upfront income tax relief. And then when you sell it, hopefully the gain in a few years time, no capital gains tax at the back end. Terrific. So what happened in this particular case I want to tell you about, which has just uh, appeared in the, in the courts, is that the guy who sold his EIS shares, he invested a few quid years ago, and thankfully they had made a return, um, and then he sold them at the back end. He sold these shares and he didn't put the gain on his tax return, rightly so in his mind, because... It was an EIS qualifying gain. And EIS qualifying gains, you pay 0% capital gains tax. Terrific. However, here's the thing. In the tax rules on EIS, it says in order for you to have zero capital gains tax when you sell in the future, you have to have firstly claimed income tax relief up front. So just... You just get your head around that. Basically, what it's saying is, in order for you to have claimed tax relief down the line, you must first claim tax relief on day one. It sounds kind of bizarre, isn't it, that you've got the, the future occurrence of tax relief is dependent on you claiming it in advance and uh, in, in, uh, up front. Now, this particular guy didn't claim the income tax relief when he subscribed for these EIS shares for whatever reason. He didn't claim it. And HMRC looked at this and said, you didn't, you didn't claim income tax relief. The rules say you have to claim income tax relief to, to then get capital gains tax relief. So they hit him for full whack on that capital gain when it should have been exempt had he claimed income tax relief on uh, up front. Now, let's give you some numbers on this. Let's just say you've got a £50,000 investment. So fifty grand into an EIS company if you're an angel investor. And the tax rules say you can have 30% of that as an income tax reducer. So 30%, 15 grand would come off that year's income tax bill. Now, it doesn't matter what the makeup of your earnings is. If you're employed, you're on a high paid job, it's all PAYE. In that case, it would result in an income tax refund. The point is up to 15K comes off your income tax bill up front. Now, in this example, assume that 50 grand investment doubled in five years and you sold out. That 50 grand gain, that's all tax free. But in this particular instance, this guy, and I don't know what the actual numbers were for this guy, but he didn't claim upfront income tax relief. So his gain at the back end was taxable, even though really it should have been tax free. And all you've got to do in this situation, you see, you might say, well, hang on a minute. What if you, what if you invested a, because we always say in the tax world, don't let the, uh, the tax tail wag the commercial dog. So it could be that this investment was so good that there wasn't enough tax to frank the EIS relief. That's not a problem. So let's say he put 50 grand in, he would have got a 15 grand credit on his tax bill. But let's say for whatever reason, he only had five or 10 grand income tax bill. That's fine. It just it will wipe it out. But the point is, it doesn't have, it just has to be some income tax relief on day one, even a pound's worth of income tax relief to then qualify for the capital gains tax exemption at the back end. So this is a cautionary tale. For goodness sake, if you are looking at investing in EIS and they're becoming more and more popular, particularly amongst EIS, uh, SME business owners looking to raise finance, you apply to HMRC, you say, look, can I have an EIS qualifying company, please? HMRC writes back and says, yes, you can. You wave that piece of paper to potential investors because all of a sudden it makes it more attractive for them because they're getting this 30% tax relief on day one. Now, the crucial thing is they've got to claim some tax relief on day one to then 
uh, tick the box for then the future exemption for capital gains. And in this case, this guy didn't do it. He didn't, for whatever reason, I don't know why, he didn't claim um, any income tax at all. Like I said, it doesn't have to be for the full amount that you're allowed to get, because if it's such a, a really good investment, let's say, let's say in this example, 50 grand in, you didn't even have a 15 grand tax bill, it's fine, as long as you have some sort of tax bill to set it off against, you will then be able to qualify for that tax-free uh, gain on any growth in the future. So, as with anything in HMRC, where there is tax, not giveaways, but tax benefits, very generous tax breaks, there's always so many hoops you've got to jump through, and the devil's in the detail. And one of the least well-known ones, I would suggest, in the EIS world is, and it's counterintuitive, to get tax relief in the future, you must have claimed tax relief up front. So there you go. So just an overview there on a recent case involving EIS and the traps to look out for. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please do subscribe. And as always, I'll see you soon.